Let's go. Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is the Upper Tier Podcast. It's Thursday. It's Thursday Tier Talk. We've got plenty for you tonight. European Review, Premier League Preview. We'll be taking a quick look at the title race. And something a little bit different for you tonight. We're going to be talking about the Masters. We're going to be talking about the Grand National. What a week on the back of WrestleMania 40 last weekend. And we're into another week of a mammoth amount of sports. As always, my co-host, the Dazzler, is here. How are we, Darren? Good evening, brother. How are you? Good, not a bother at all. Uh, Sorry, am, be... I, am, I, am I looking at the scoreline right here? You are looking at the scoreline right here, right there. It's absolutely... I, did say this, I did say these guys could trouble you. Yeah. Well, if you looked at the start in 11, it says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's have a look. Kellar Gomez, Van Dijk, Canati, Simicus, Jones, Andy McAllister, Elliot, Nunes, Gakpo. You're asking for a problem, aren't you, really? He's after changing it at half time. Salah's on for Costas. Uh, Robbo yeah. is on. Sabbath Loy and Robertson. Yeah. So we had to change it up. Absolutely pathetic. Pathetic performance. Few, few boys, few boys back on the bench there, have you? Yeah, Jota's back. I think it's Jota, Trent, and um, Bichetic. Bichetic is back. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> Let's get into this first. We'll take the comments first. Acers is in UFC 300 on Saturday night. Can't wait as well. So that should be pretty good. Forward to that as well. Congrats on the death of AEW, Darren. <laughs> That's awesome. my boy TK. My boy TK, baby. Awesome. Oh. That game, absolutely atrocious. And uh, what's the crack, Noel and Dazzler? All good. Looking forward to the Palace game, I have to say. Heading over with Darren. We're going to have a bit of crack. We're going to road trip. Going to do a little bit of time in Manchester for my sins and for Darren's happiness. And uh, then we're going to be heading down to Anfield on the Sunday to uh, go to the Palace game. So it should be a bit of crack. Darren uh, happily uh, organised some hospitality stuff for us. Which was good to uh, we're going to sit with the, We're going to sit with the nice people now. We are. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna be in with the prawn sandwich brigade. We well, I think we're gonna be with the uh, katsu curry guys and stuff like that, and the burgers. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be. We'll find our way around that food bar, don't you, Woody? Absolutely. Awesome. He's in again, close to a pen off endo. Yeah. Watching it here, keeping an eye on it. Don't worry. Bournemouth and Solanke double over United and <laughs> fraud. Is that. is ask Cody? Does he want to take the bag off his face yet? Cody, do you want to take the paper bag off you? Jerry Rhodes. Jerry Rhodes. <laughs> Has a twang to it, doesn't it? Has a twang to it. Sure does. Del Boy's in. Big up Del Boy. Evening, Jens Dazzler. I've not seen you in any public toilets lately. <laughs> not this week, Del. Not this week, pal. No. We know Bank Holiday, you sure see. You, I'm sure you if you slide into his DMs, you might be able to search with some. <laughs> <laughs> Those days are long behind me, Noel. I'm just putting that out there, right? Painfully watching this game, yeah. This painful to watch it at the moment. Tragic. Baz is in. Evening, lads. What's a crack? All good, my friend. Hope you are well. The man with the best, the best selection of boxer shorts this side of the Mississippi. Absolutely. Our boy Barry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. good man, Baz. Um, and Morris is in. Are you boating? We are boating. We are boating. We are. I'm sure, are. We are, sure are. we are sail, but not railing. We are sail and motoring. So there'll be a road trip. We'll shoot a bit of footage. We'll have a bit of crack. Who knows what might come? I, I don't, I don't imagine it's gonna be as good as our last road trip. No, because I'm, I still at times lose my breath during the day thinking about that one because that was just that was better than life itself. If anyone ever wants to have the best, the best road trip of your life, you need to bring Jr. John Reedy and David Cullen in the back of your car and just let the lads go to town and away you go. Comedy gold, comedy gold. It broke the monotony of driving across the four, whole length. Five hours, yeah, going the length and breadth of Wales through the national park and up and down the hills and valleys. Oh man, what a, what a time! Right, let's get into it. Premier League preview Newcastle versus Spurs. Newcastle versus Spurs. And <coughs> excuse me. I think I steered clear of this um, in my bets from what I can remember. Because uh, I think this will be keenly contested, shall we say. Newcastle with a great win last week, obviously, at Fulham, uh, away from home. Um, 
and and Spurs, you know, Spurs do what Spurs do, uh, scoring, uh, conceding, and winning. That's generally, you know, Spurs are like the worst price team in the in the league for result and about to score because they've done it so many times this season. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know whether they'll, I don't know whether they'll fancy a trip that far north because obviously from from London to Newcastle, there's quite a big distance, isn't there? Um, I wonder will they be staying up there the night before? You'd have to think they would be. If I'm blink with Jack Perry. <laughs> oh, see the, um, did you see the Twitter today? They said, no. see, I'm doing Rick Rude things, appearing on AEW and on uh, WWE. At the Ron. same time. Very good. Very good. Um, I think I think Newcastle could get something out of this. Um, I think it would be, again, very, very keenly contested. I think Newcastle up there, they're very difficult to back against. Um, although Spurs are in good form, scoring goals, they are conceding one or two. I could see this being a score draw, and I'm gonna say two two on this one. It couldn't be. Is it two nil? I don't know. I was just saying, I'm probably a little bit behind you. I was just saying, Darwin put one over the bar. Oh, sorry. I thought when you made that face, it was just after going two nil. No, it's still, it's still one nil. Uh, West Ham doing all right in Leverkusen, Eddie. Yeah, nil nil it was last time I checked. Still nil nil, and and Villa leading at home to uh, Lille. Ollie Watkins, our boy. Absolutely. So, what did you call Newcastle and Spurs? Two two. Two two. I think yeah. Spurs are just going to edge it. Um, Brentford versus Sheffield United. This is a must win for Thomas Frank, isn't it? I think it's a must win for both of them, really, isn't it? Obviously, Sheffield United will probably talk about it later off the back of the points deduction and stuff like that. Um, it's a must win for both teams. I think Sheffield United have been decent in the last few weeks, really trying to put it up to teams a lot better since the, the hiding they got off Arsenal, you know. Um, I think they look a much better team when they managed to get Ben Burton Diaz and uh, Ollie McBurney out there together. You know, they're, they're creating chances and they're even taking, taking chances as well. Um, the big issue is keeping it tight at the back and they haven't been able to do it unfortunately and I don't foresee them being able to keep it close enough this weekend I think we are going to have a Brentford win and I'm going to say 3-1 Brentford yeah I think so Morris was mentioning it there about Brentford's dangerous slide I've been talking about it now for months I think how yeah. long have we been talking about the slide Brentford has been on the, the one thing I will say about Brentford is I we played them obviously a couple of games ago and when I was looking at the team news on the evening on live score, they have a huge amount of injuries, like a huge amount of injuries. And when you're a big team, injuries will play a big part. But I feel like sometimes when you're, when you're not as big a team, injuries like that, they really, really do hamper the rhythm and flow of the team because the guys coming in to replace them just aren't at that level because from a budget point of view, you don't have the kind of money to, to sit a hundred and twenty, hundred and fifty thousand pound a week player on the bench, you know? Yeah, I think it's frustrating as well, because I think they were obviously expecting a huge bump in form when Tony returned. Yeah. yeah, but it seemed to have not happened. And I'm not saying necessarily it's him. I did read no. a report today as well. You have been heavily linked to town as well. And apparently it was thought that Brentford might have reduced the fee down as far as potentially 40 million. You think only a 40 million? I think they'd want more, wouldn't they? I would have thought. I don't that. I don't see anyone sh um you know shoehorning them out there for 40 million. Um now listen, would I be interested in them? Possibly. Um but I think it does depend on what else is for offer. Like, I think if you're na if if you're if you're looking at it and going, well, we're going for Ivan Tony. He's our number one choice. I would be slightly worried. But if I think if he was part of a group of players that you were looking for, and you know maybe he was third or fourth down the list, and the other couple ahead of him you weren't able to get, and you were taking him in, then I think it's slightly different. You know, um, because I think he's a decent option. Two nil down. Now Samaka just scored a second yet. Oh no. Burnley versus Brighton. Um, hard to know what we're gonna get from Brighton. I suppose they've they've just been the the Jekyll and Hyde side this this season so far, haven't they? Brighton. 
couple of teams in the league like that. Obviously, it's a, it's a really bad defeat last week, 3 0 at home to Arsenal. Um, I think they'll want to put a better foot forward. I know Burnley last weekend went away at Goodison and, and just couldn't get past that. Uh, James Tarkovsky and Jared Brightway back line. Um, and I think Jordan Pickford as well had a, had a pretty good game and Everton were just able to hold them out. I think this weekend, though, I think Borne will definitely get on the score sheet. And I think they make it really, really difficult for Brighton to get over the line. I could see a score draw here. I could see a, a, a 1-1 here. Yep. Uh, Man City, Luton. Yeah, this will be... I, I, I foresee goals. I, I think this could be... 5 or 6-1. Depending on what they go with. You know. Um, I suppose we probably expect... Kevin De Bruyne to play. Um, after after not playing the other night and stuff like that, or not having as big a part, um, I I think I think City could absolutely snowball Luton here. For, I, I'm going five one City. Round one can always end big up Atalanta's cooking like the final boss, and awesomely reckons game over. They're a, they're a decent side. Now mm. I listen. I can see the team you've put out isn't helping your cause, um, and and that can, that's only down to to the management and what they what they thought they were going to get out of the game. But Atalanta are a decent side. They're they're high enough up in Serie A, and they've got some good players there. Um, you know some tidy players, the boy Coop Miners and stuff like that, and um and the boy uh, the Catalara up front and stuff. There's some nice touches and stuff like that. Some good technical footballers, but if Liverpool put the Put the no flush out there, they should be beating them. Really. Uh Forest versus Wolves. Yeah, um, probably looking forward to this one. Yeah, um, more than some of the other games. Um Wolves obviously again just a little bit goal shy. Just just not able to score the, the volume of goals that their play deserves, their all round play. Um I think a defeat last week to West Ham will be it'll play on them a little bit. Um, you know, and I think you'll, I think this could be end to end. I think this will be really, really exciting. But again, I think two teams that don't score enough goals. Um, and I, I think, I think I'm just gonna favour the home team here. Um, I think I'm just going to go two one Forest because I think Forest have a couple more goals in them. Than Wolves do, you know. You've got Gibbs White, and you've got Alanga, and you've got Wood, and you know guys like that. I think there's just a couple more goals in Forest. Yeah, and I think when you get a game like Forest and Wolves as well, home advantage is really important as well. When you have, oh, you think so? That, that can that can nearly be nearly as good as a, a couple of opportunities or a goal, you know. So that'll be big for them. Absolutely. Um, Azlar Perez has a Zoya and Kobe Mainu. Perez, that's my tribal chief. Yeah. It's going to take a lot to get Kobe Mainu out of Manchester United, I think. A lot. Probably not money that's there on the back of Killian and Papa. Yeah. And, and, and I also think, you know, the kid will have a certain amount of loyalty to the club where he's been since he was a kid. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's it's different. You know, if if, if he was eyeing up Garnacho, I think I'd be saying, right, we need to get as, as, as good of a fee out of this as possible. I think with Mainu, I could absolutely see him playing in, you know, for the rest of his career. You know? Really awesome. How is no flags going to protest against price increase? Boom decision. It's absolute bullshit of the highest order. Never seen anything like that. Oh, drive you mad. The way some of these fans think of price increase. Um, Bournemouth versus Man United. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Just wondering which man United we're going to see. Mm. You know, um, again, we're another one of them Jekyll and Hyde teams. You know, you see for a spell against Chelsea, we look like we're a football team, and then we lose the game, and then we 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 spend a a huge portion of the first half under the cosh against you guys, and then again come back into it and start creating chances. And it's not a game we couldn't have won last Sunday either, but it's it's more true as we spoke about last season. It's the moments, isn't it? Rather than the you know the the consistency of performance throughout a game, 
it's just having players that can create a moment um, and, and get you into a game or win you a game. You'd have to hope you can get over the line this weekend. But a couple of disappointing results recently, but it won't be easy going to Dwarmouth. And again, there's there's more injuries at the back for us and stuff like that. So I, I'll say United 2-1, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it tighter than that. I just reckon another Solanke 3 nil incoming. Let's see what happens. And Mark, our resident rep is in. Well, hey, evening, lads. Liverpool and Manchester, lock up your daughters, grannies, and everyone in between. The upper tiers. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I mean, Solanke is a machine this season. Respect to him, absolutely. No one's given him more respect than me and Darren on this podcast. Uh, 100%. Uh, still no Ireland manager. No Russia. <laughs> Yeah, Morris, Morris, I have the phone beside me in case they call. Phone is there. I have it here ready. Um, what was the chances just... that was going to happen? Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Highly unlikely, would have said. Do you want to answer to him there, or do you want to wait and say, "Listen, we'll take the gig later." He was ringing me. I'm your agent. Fifteen <laughs> percent all day, brother. You know it. Don't be wearing Liverpool colours around Trafford Centre. Yeah, give all, but will you? I think I worry about things like that. You would be better than we, any. We won't. We won't be in the. We won't be in the Trafford Centre. So don't worry. Dazla as manager of Ireland will be worse than Tony Khan's booking. I doubt it. I, I doubt know. it. Wouldn't be that bad. Wouldn't be that. Bad. No. Absolutely. So not. West Ham versus Fulham. Yeah, I. I suppose Fulham have been on a. A slow, rapid decline of late. Just right. Just right. Excuse me. Um, but what I what I do think is, and we've spoken about this throughout the season. I don't fancy teams after Thursday night games. I think it really saps the life out of them. I think Leverkusen would have run the absolute legs out of West Ham tonight, and if West Ham can get out of there with some sort of result, it'll be a tremendous result. But I don't think that'll aid them on Sunday. I think on Sunday. They could find it difficult uh, uh, playing against a Fulham team who will be very well drilled under Marco Silva and who will be very, very fresh. And I think we might see Fulham bump West Ham off the weekend. And I'm going for West Ham 1, Fulham 2. Yeah, I think if I think back into my bets as well, I think we had a similar thought process. But yeah. I don't know if I can remember anyway. Um, we'll skip the next one because we're going to talk about it a little bit. Arsenal versus Aston Villa. Yeah, this is a huge game for Arsenal. This is a huge, huge game for Arsenal. Ring this for is Villa. a potential... Ben... Top four. Yeah, it is, but... Excuse me. I think it's got to be bigger for Arsenal because they're still in the race. You know, they're still in the race at this stage. And they would be expected to to, to win the game at home. I think, obviously, the, the result against Bayern the other night, they'll be sort of semi-happy with it. Um, and I think... I think Villa obviously playing tonight will will make stuff a bit a bit more a bit easier for Arsenal obviously because they they're gonna have an extra night or two in it and to recover and recuperate and stuff like that. So I'm going Arsenal here. Um, I'm going Arsenal three one tight keenly fought, but I think when Villa Villa are pushing to get that that equaliser at two one, I think Arsenal will put a nail in their coffin on the counter attack and beat them three one and it'll finish that way. Interesting. Interesting. Liverpool Palace. You gonna go down Chelsea now? And then go back up? No, we go Liverpool. We go Liverpool Palace because the Monday um, night was kind of boring. It for for to go all that way, it better be Liverpool. <laughs> Let's just say that. It better be Liverpool. I suppose the one thing I would say was uh, I've started to see the the green shoots of revival, let's say, from Crystal Palace. And they seem to have a strange habit of turning up at Anfield. I don't know why. They can be a, a team that cause you guys a little bit of problems. Um, and I think, obviously, a Michael Elise coming off the bench last week will be huge for them. And, and Eze getting more minutes in the legs. And, you know, Mateta kind of building his confidence with the goal last week against City, which I took, thought he took really, really well. Um, I think Liverpool will get over the line. But I... I think again it'll be it'll be a tough day at the office and there could be a bit of nail biting going on quite late in the day. Um tougher than tonight tonight at the office. 
some of the <coughs> Yeah, I think I think I'll go. I think I'll go Liverpool two one. If we play the way we played tonight, you may put your money on Palace. Tell you that one. Are you guys previewing the Everton game? Villa <laughs> 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 won't lose Sunday. Villa won't lose on Sunday. Oh no, hey, so you're holding out for a lot of these results at times. Uh, Monday night, Chelsea versus Everton at the Bridge. Take your bag off, Jerry. Take your bag off. Um, Monday night at the bridge. Um, Chelsea have goals in them. Now they're leaky, but Everton just aren't as potent, even as the likes of a Sheffield United were last week. Sheffield United could score two or three in a game. I don't fancy Everton to get two or three ever. So with that in mind, I'm going 3 1 Chelsea. Right, that rounds out that. Give me a chat. Talk about the title race. What you're thinking at the moment? Um. So at the minute, like if I look at this weekend, I I fancy them all to win. So we're as you were. Um. I think the following weekend, again, I would be looking at something pretty similar. Is is everybody win? Um, obviously, Merseyside Derby that's going to be a huge game uh, for you guys. Last one, um, of yeah, that's going to be huge. They're going to make it an absolute cauldron for you guys, an absolute cauldron. Um, and and Arsenal obviously playing City or sorry, Arsenal playing Chelsea that day as well. And um, they may not be the Chelsea of old, but they're unbeaten in seven at the minute. Chelsea unbeaten in seven. And uh, they are conceding, but they are scoring. They're creating. Um, and I think the boy Carl Palmer has been phenomenal for them. Um, they, they could make they could make things difficult. Um, I kind of... When I look at the City... The City run-in. To get to this stage in the season and have a lot of those bigger sides ticked off the list with 70 in the bank, mm. I'm probably thinking their you know yeah literally, literally they, only the Spurs game sticks out doesn't it for absolutely this this the Spurs game for me sticks out as 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 the big one that you know you could go into the final later season at home or sorry away against Spurs and and a win could could retain you the title if i look at liverpool i mean you got to go away to goodison it's not always easy away at west ham uh, you've got spurs you villa and i can't see the last one because the thing is covering on me Chat and and your your home against Wolves it should be all right but I mean you've a you've a four game spin there Everton West Ham Spurs and Villa that's tough that's yeah. tough I gotta say and and for Arsenal I mean if Chelsea Spurs Bournemouth United and like again there's another four probably when yourselves and when yourselves and and Ar- and uh, Arsenal start with Chelsea and Everton that's when it starts muddying the waters a little bit that's where I feel you, we could end up seeing. Uh, or even, you know, even, a, Spurs, a even the next Spurs West Ham, way to West Ham and their way to Spurs. Yeah, I, I think even the game before that Chelsea and Everton are, you know, they that'll be difficult. Those four, those four. Yeah, mm. from there down. Yeah, from Ch- Chelsea to United for for Arsenal and and Everton to Villa for you guys, I think is tough, and that's where I would expect City to get twelve out of twelve mm. with Forest, Wolves, Fulham, and, and West Ham. You know. I think I, I I do think we'll go into the last day of the season though, with with a couple of teams who could win a a, a title, which which I love. You know, I do love that. Gotta say, I, I I don't expect Spurs. I think yeah, could be iffy enough. I don't expect Arsenal to have any problem away at United. I do. Well, depending on who you get back by. I, I think I, the only reason I say that is I think if you play the way you played at the weekend, I think if you cough up those type of chances to Arsenal, I think Arsenal will just will score. That's my thinking. Whereas I just think we're just so blunt up front at the moment. So, you know. No, I, 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 I think, you know, people are talking about the chances that were given up and stuff like that. But I think nobody's really kind of put us to the sword, so to speak. Um, so there is a degree of, you know, he's he's a he's aware that 
because of the way we're playing, there there is a certain amount that's gonna be gonna be, you know, against the head, so to speak. But I think the chances they're giving away, they're not necessarily guilt edged or do you know what I mean? Now listen, I don't be facing any shots on goal if I can help it. But I feel like at times they're they're willing to allow shots on goal because they feel like they'll be able to deal with the situation, if that makes sense. I don't like the tactic, but I think that's I think that's where they're going with it. Um, I, I think we'll trouble Arsenal. I'm actually at that game, by the way. Okay. I'm at United Arsenal. Um, it's the week after Brody's confirmation, uh, Brody's communion, and so we're going over for that. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, Mark put this comment in. Dazzler, did you watch the old firm? And this is where you have to tell the truth now. I, I did. He did watch the old firm, and he updated me on the old firm. I'll tell you what happened. I came home, Brody, at a football match on Saturday morning. I got cancelled at work, and I came home, and there was no 12 o'clock kickoff in the Premier League. Yeah. So I was like, right, okay. And then I realised, oh, there's no 12 o'clock kickoff because the old firm. So I, I had a little look at the old firm. Um, and I did enjoy it, in fairness. I, I was keeping you updated when I was on the phone to you, and I was like, oh, oh, oh. You got very excited. I did. I've spoken to you recently about that, about the not having a horse in the race and how much you can enjoy football when you're not looking for a result out of it, you know? You can enjoy it for what it is. It was good. It was impressive. It was a good game of football. Um, that's like a secret Scottish League fan. It all makes sense now. There's people in this normally in this chat that would be. Proud. I'm not. <laughs> I am not a Scottish League fan. I'm not even a Celtic fan of the troop you know. But um, it was just there was no other football on, and I would prefer to watch football than anything else on the telly. Morris, they have won one away at United in 15 years in the league. Yep. Hey, listen. We we watched United do a number on them last season on the boat line on the way home. Class, remember. We did, we did indeed. But I think, in fairness, I think they were in a kind of a that's not following Celtic. Um, Roy, give me your thoughts on this. These two instances that happened in the Champions League, and then we'll just have a quick run down the Champions League. Get your thoughts and your picks. So I don't think the Saka one was a penalty. And um, I think for me, what I saw was him playing the ball around Neuer and sticking his leg in between Neuer's legs to create contact and go down. I felt when I looked at it first, he kicked Neuer in the leg. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I, it wasn't, it wasn't a penalty for me. The first one, however, with, with Gabriel and David Raya is absolutely a penalty. Now, Absolutely. I, w- I want to get your thoughts on this because, and for me, I think there was a conversation yesterday on one of the channels or on Talk Sport or something like that about um, in instances like this, do you play the game in relation to common sense or do you play the game in relation to the rules of the game? And I thought to myself, that's a very dangerous world to be in, isn't it? Yeah, well, like you can understand when someone says that, what their theory is going to be behind it, that Ray is, is, is passing it to Ting, but your man's putting his hand on it to then play it out because they're playing from there, not from in the centre. But I think if you follow the letter, letter of the law, when David Ray puts that ball on the line and, and plays it to his left-hand side, Gabriel touches with his hand at the penalty. Like, you know, it's, it's clear and evident in my mind anyway. Salah just scored there, but it looks offside. West Ham still hanging on here. 80 minutes gone, nil-nil. Now, let's see. Imagine they stole a late one. So, it's not fit. Um. Yeah, check over offside. 
offside, yeah. Check over offside. Yeah, so with the Gabri the Gabrielle one, you you're thinking Stonewall. For me, but I do understand where someone would say common sense or logical versus letter of the law. Yeah, I suppose with the law, the rule is there. So the law is to be adhered to. I think if you start factoring common sense into it, your common sense versus maybe my common sense. Exactly. Versus the ref's common sense. So some some people some people don't have common sense. So you yeah. can't then give them a subjective opportunity to use it if they don't have it, you know? Penalty for Bayern, not for Arsenal, said Lee Morris. Gabrielle is 100% the handball. Um, I think so. Uh, Morris back in again. He obviously didn't hear the whistle. He has it. I in think his... so. Yeah. But like him not hearing the whistle at Atlanta after going close again there. Skamaka with a header. Almost um, got his hat trick. Mark is in. Definitely not a penalty for Arsenal, but the law, Bayern should have had a penalty and an Everton two point deduction. Um, right, let's get into this. What you thinking? Who's going through next week? Yeah, so like, first of all, what a great two nights! What a great two nights! Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, sure was no boring one nil victories, you know. Um, teams going for it and looking to try and win the toy and stuff like that, which I love. Um, the whole away goal thing has taken the kind of chess match out of it, really, hasn't it? Yeah, it does to a degree. Um, it does to a degree. Although I do like the fact that the rule's not in 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 play anymore. But um, I do think it it gives you a slightly different view on how things could go. Like had Bayern have gotten two goals away from home, so to speak, in this, I would be thinking they're in a really good position. But I wouldn't be shocked to see Arsenal nick a one nil win in in Munich next week. I think Bayern have been poor at home all season in front of their own fans and probably, you know, probably enjoyed playing away from their fans in yeah, the Emirates. 3 0 down to Alamant. Wow. Wow. Pasolic. Wow. The, so you see the boy Ederson? He's the defensive midfielder, yeah? He's the DM. He's the Brazilian lad, and um, he's the one that had the shot on target that the keeper saved, and Pasalic has knocked in the rebound. We've been heavily linked with him. <coughs> heavily linked with him. He's he's a, a younger, sort of more robust, leggy version of Casemiro, um, and he's, he's a guy who will be heavily, heavily sought after this this coming summer and um, because generally what happens at Atlanta is they get themselves to a certain level and then they sell off the crown jewels and they try and do it all over again they've been doing it quite successfully again I think Coop Miners will probably leave as well and there's a couple of other guys who who may who may get moves but the boy Edison's a really really good footballer I don't know if you've seen much of him tonight he's, he's very tidy very tidy. You look like somebody who's just had the jam taken out of their donut. See the state of this back line at Liverpool. Look at zigzag. Never seen that like it. What the hell is Van Dijk and all doing? Terrible. Um, Morris backing against Arsenal in Germany. Um. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I think the I think the top one for me is probably the toss of a coin. Whereas I feel a little more comfortable with the other ones. Like I I, I feel like City will beat Madrid at home. I feel like Atletico will go away and, and, and do a job on Dortmund. And I think Barca will, will be PSG at home. And um, I think the only game I don't feel like I can call 100% is is the Arsenal game. I would be erring on the side of Arsenal, but the one thing I would say is, with Bayern possibly out with a title race, they may see this as the last chance saloon, and they may be able to put a performance together to try and get themselves 
um, true to a semi final, and you know, depending on the draw, you could end up in a Champions League final all of a sudden. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's always tough as well going to Germany. It's not in- easy, you know. No, not at all. No, not Iron at all. In arena as well, like with all the fans there and stuff like that. No, so they'll be pumped up with it, that's for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> City will be trying to travel again. That's why I love when Pat McAfee speaks like lawyers like no, he can. Harsh. Very <laughs> harsh. Jesus. Big up, Joanne. How are you? Good to see you. Thanks How are you? Me. Jesus. Yeah, go. You know what I'm going to go? I'm going to go Bayern. I'm going to go against the grain. I'm going to go Bayern, Real, and Letty. Um, I, I was I was so impressed with Barcelona last night. Were you? Leverkusen have just gonna go up. Have they? Eighty eighty fourth minute, Jonas Hoffman. He he only came on as a sub, and he's uh, and he's got the he's got the goal to put them one 0 up. And um, Villa are now Villa are now two 0 up at home to Lille. Uh, Ollie two Watkins. One. Two one, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, no two 0 Two nil. Two nil. Oh, the little goal was disallowed, was it? Um, VAR ruled offside. Yeah. Okay. And um, we've Ollie Watkins and John McGinn on target for um for Villa. Two okay. nil for Villa. West Ham are one down and Liverpool are three down. All I'll say, Joanne, is I haven't got a clear. I haven't got a clear what the certain lineup was. What he was even thinking. The subs is even more bewildering, and I just I tell you, it's just this is absolutely. Crazy. Gonna need to get a goal or two here before the end to make this any sort of a, a chance at all. Or we'll be staring down the barrel of another 4 0 like the Paris again. Crazy. All love, Dazzler. Big up, Romy won. Rasmus Wilding gave Atlanta information on Liverpool tactics. He might have. Um, no bonus, massive loss from boys. Um, right, what do we want to get into? Right, we get into let's talk about the masters. And um, currently at the moment, where are we at the moment with the lives? So let me have a little I'll have a little look here, will I? We may talk golf. I certainly don't want to be talking football. <laughs> no, not with the way things are going for you anyway. No. Sports. Golf masters, round one. The Sean Bell is seven under. Seven under after tearing up the course. Now, here's the only thing I will say about Bryson DeChambeau. Plays the game in a in a very um um you know they call him the mad scientist. Mm. So there's a lot of talk goes into his process and. Um, and and he has the ability to do some crazy things from a positive point of view, but also from a negative point of view of view. Um extremely Jekyll and Hyde can shoot seven under, but can just as easily shoot seven over tomorrow and be level par after two rounds. Um so you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't give him the jacket just yet, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, oh, absolutely not. I mean, round one that doesn't. I mean, there's always someone that pops up in round one, don't they, and publish the score? And yeah. To be honest, and, and to be honest, sometimes they're rarely in the reckoning come day four. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that's a serious score. Even today, even with the weather the way it was and the greens being a little bit more playable and stuff like that. But uh, uh, certainly, I can I can I can take a little bit of um, I can take a little smile here because Tigers won under after two. Yeah, absolutely. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? Um, I nothing would give me greater pleasure than to see Tiger Woods win a Masters. Your outsider as well, Connors is there at uh, minus two after eight in. The new pick yeah, in the that's right. Yeah, I, I did. Do you want me to go over the bets now? Yeah, if you want. To, who did you go? Top two, was it? it was the other one. Yeah, so I actually I went to, I went for two outright and two. Um, to um each way so i went for scotty scheffler he's obviously favorite seven to two 
Um, and I went for Brooks Ketka at 18 to 1. And then as my outsiders, my each way bets, I went for Max Homa at 50 to 1 and Corey Connors also at 50 to 1. Um, and like if I'm looking at it now, Connors at the minute is uh, tied for 10. He's on minus 2. And uh, Max Homa is minus one. So, like the two lads at fifty to one have have started quite well. Morris the same Villa two one. Okay, very good. It's back, it's game back on again now, isn't it? Really? Is it? There is it. There is a bit of a shock going on tonight as well, though. Other than the Liverpool game, um, and and that would be Roma one nil up away from home against AC Milan. Or early on as well. Yeah, they scored after 17 minutes and uh, they're holding out, which is would be some performance from them. Who did you go for yourself? I only picked one and I went with Victor Hoffman. He was up okay. as good as four under um, after nine, but he's after dropping two there. He's two He's two under now after 11. So he must okay. have had a double bogey on 10, I think it was. Um, Getting around amen corner, 10, 11, 12 is... Is where stuff can kind of fall apart a little bit and it's it's tough to get it back on the rails then. Yeah, but he's the he's the only one I picked out Victor Hoffman. Um, sort of the golf it's a lottery really, you know. So depending on where you where you, you placed your bet, um I think I told you earlier, Paddy Power offering ten places of fifty the odds, which mm. I thought was phenomenal. Mm. Very, very good. Incredible. Yeah. Right, let's talk about the national. Nationals on, on Saturday. What was your what was your picks for the national? Yeah, so I don't know if you if you remember, but I actually backed Corak Rambler at Cheltenham and I finished second. Um yeah. because he's he's won a Scottish Grand National. Mm. Um so when I was looking into it, I I again I picked a winner and I picked an outsider. Um my my winner I went for Korak Rambler, mm-hmm. and my outsider is isn't actually on the screen, um, and I've gone for Coco Beach. That's my the outsider. Gar- the Gordon Elliott train, Coco Beach, yeah. um, which Mark, again, with, Mark's outsider, it's Mark's outsider as well. With 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 six paces being paid, I think at thirty three to one, uh, Coco Beach isn't a bad bet, you know. Match finish 3 0 to Adelaide. Wow. Will I will I tell you where my wife is gonna put her money on Saturday? One. So there's a horse in the race with the same name as her grandmother. And so I imagine my wife will be putting money on Kitty's Light at 14 to 1. Am I right? Especially for her anniversary. What's I? It's her anniversary on Saturday. We are lumping on Kitty's light of 14 to 1. Lumping. Lumping. Wow. Um, My main one that I went for was Manila Indo at 20 to 1. The reason I picked Manila Indo, it's it's Rachel Blackmore. And it's uh, it's Henry de Bromhead and his uh, stables in great form at the moment. And Rachel Blackmore is on the back of it, isn't she? Yeah. 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 Good choice there. Decent odds, 20 to 1. You know, you're Absolute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your lottery as well. So that's oh, yeah. Um, right. Do you want to get into beat the bookie? I've done three on top of my golf and horsies. Very good. Um. I'm keeping it real. Obviously, we're going in with the uh, result and about to score. Yeah. So I'm going Brentford. I'm about to score. Yeah. On Sunday, I'm going Liverpool. I'm about to score. Okay. And on Monday, I'm going Chelsea. I'm about to score. So one from each day of the week. It's not huge odds, but it pays twenty to one, and it will be real tidy. Mm. Liverpool. Mm. Or Brentford on Saturday, Liverpool on Sunday, and Chelsea on Monday. All result and both to score. 20 to 1. It's tidy. I, have Brentford, I have Brentford in mind. Yeah, it's real tidy. My second bet 
is any time goal scorer. And I've just gone with the three. Yeah. Um I've gone with I've gone with Kevin De Bruyne versus Luton. Yeah, because I thought the last day we seen him, I thought he just looked back to his superb best. I have him too. Um I thought with us being at the Liverpool game, I needed to pick somebody. And you know who my favourite Liverpool player is, don't you know? That's a bit mild, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely not. No? Who did you pick? Yabba. Captain Chaos. Captain Darwin Chaos. Nunes. God. Darwin He's Nunes. Until the back, good lord. Kevin De Bruyne, Darwin Nunes, and we finish out with Son for Spurs. Because uh, I know Newcastle have a couple of little injuries at the back. I fancy Son might find himself in behind there and put one past Martin Dubravka. It's not great odds as a treble to pay 16 to 1. But listen, 16 to 1 winner is better than the, an 18 to 1 loser. I had um I have four, but I have two of yours. So I have okay, Son okay. and I have Kevin De Bruyne. Very good, very good. I paired it up for a 30 to 1 shot. I paired it up with Ivan Tony because I thought we yeah, might have yeah, uh-huh. um, and then I went with Dom Solanke against you guys oh did you now see well, thought, this is why you don't make as much money as me you bet with your heart not with your head I thought you were going to go SA off SA off uh, Crystal Palace <laughs> just the really you, you thought that's <laughs> I was waiting for you to come with it I knew you no 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 I think a Darwin to put the markers on it. So there you go. So that's that's my goal star one as well. So Lanky, De Bruyne, Ivan Tony, and Son. Very good. And then I on my 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 new favourite bet. To be yellow carded. Yellow no, carded. Yellow carded. To be yellow carded. So um I've gone for Reese Burke for Luton. Because they're obviously they're gonna be at the Etihad. At the weekend, it's going to be a tough day at the office, and no other Luton player has been booked as much as the boy Reese Bork. He likes, of- yeah, he likes a little tackle. This kid, um, I've gone for a man who didn't let me down last weekend. He got a card last weekend, um, Danilo Oliveira, uh, at Knott's Forest, and again, it's going to be a dog fight in that midfield versus Wolves. He got a card last week. I fully expect the kid to get another card this week, um. He's crazy, isn't he? He's a very good footballer, though. He's a really yeah. tidy footballer, but he's right. all action. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's all action. He is all action. Um, and then, and then a guy who I, I probably think this guy gets away with an awful lot. And I just thought, you know what? I reckon he's going to get one. He scored tonight for Aston Villa, but I think John McGinn plays on the edge quite a bit. Um, him and Douglas Luiz. I see Douglas Luiz has been this card tonight, and I think I'm going to go for John McGinn. Now, as a treble, Reese Burke, Danilo, and John McGinn pay 58 to 1. That's lovely. And not a stretch at all. Not a stretch at all. At not nearly 60 to 1, day. not a stretch. No, that's good. I like that one. That's one to watch. Why, well, thank you. Right, I did a treble in result on both the score, and the treble plays 20 to 1. So I did Spurs and both the score against Newcastle. I okay. did Brentford and both the score against Sheffield United. The Sheffield United have been picking up a few goals as of late. Okay. Um, and I did Man City and both the score, which is kind of a little bit of a stretch. But I, think oh, I don't think so. But the way they've been playing at the back, I think Luton could pop one. Absolutely. I think so too. And yeah. Luton generally score. Like, they, they, they're they not. You know, they create chances. The boy Carlton Morris has taken quite a few. They play on the counter-attack as well at times. I think City and both to score is, is a pretty good bet for me. And then I did another one. for I did a second one for the Sunday because I split it up. And this one is 28 to 1. Um, and of course, I committed the Cardinal sin of backing my own team. Of course, Liverpool. Well, you should have. Yeah, you should have. In fairness, and um, I followed your lead, Fulham and both the score against West Ham because of the yeah. Thursday Sunday conundrum. And then I went with Arsenal 
against Aston Villa, Arsenal and both the score. Yeah, I think so. And that pays 30 to 1. Yeah, I think that's a lovely bet. 30. 30. I think that's a lovely bet, i got to be honest. That's it. That's my trick. There we go. There you are. Yeah, nice and slick tonight. Pretty quick. 50 minutes. Where weren't we? Yeah, now I'm going off to listen to people just absolutely berate me online about Liverpool, but sure. We take the good times with the bad times. Listen, if we win on Sunday... The, the pluses are, you won't be listening to me, so, you know. No, I'm not that guy. <laughs> I'm not that guy. I don't need to throw shade after you've lost after you've lost 3-0. I don't need to do that. I'm hard enough as it is. Yeah. Right, folks, so until next time, enjoy the rest of your week and into the weekend. Hope you're enjoying the en- call. Enjoy that. Enjoy that good content come the weekend. Yeah, absolutely. You'll enjoy that. Um, but I will be back I might be back tomorrow evening with a Palace preview we'll see what I can do don't forget to check out Pro Wrestling Weekly last night we had another great show and should we not do it. the should we not do the Palace preview on the boat we could we could easily do the Palace preview on the boat why not yeah well maybe that's what we'll do then perfect pass the time we got, tra- we got three and a half hours right two lads talking to ourselves absolutely <laughs> why not um, yeah, so we'll do the Palace preview on the boat. Um, also, check out today, I did a little video on AEW releasing the footage from CM Punk and Jack Perry. That was a bit of fun. And also, I did a very difficult dark side of the ring with a guy called Chris Colt. Very, very difficult to do. Very, very dark. Very, is, is, very this, is this live now? It's uh, Yeah, we're still live at the moment. Yeah? No, no, no. I'm saying, is it live? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's up on the channel, yeah. It's up on the oh, very good. Yeah, it's a tough one. Um, Who was Chris Colt? Apparently, he's the greatest wrestler you never heard of. That was the moniker. Okay. How Jim Cornette uh, described him. And in fairness, some is, of the footage of him wrestling, he was way ahead of his time. Um, is Jim heavily involved in this? Uh, he, he's in it quite a bit, yeah. Because this is Lovely. this is going this is requiring a few historians. Lovely. Because I am a I am a Jim Cornet fan, I have to tell you. <laughs> Anybody that walks around in a shell tracks it with a tennis racket under their arm is my kind of guy. Morris says he's roaring into the weekend. <laughs> purring, purring is the word. No, no, I, I get it. I get it, Jim. Darren, talk the footage. Talk the footage. Talk. What an embarrassment. What an embarrassment. I this, is, this is the equivalent, right, of a goalkeeper coming, taking the cross, and turning towards his own goal and kicking it in the top corner. I heard it described today as the moment that Tony Schiavone gave away Mick Foley winning the world title and everyone changed channels. Well, I saw the, I saw the, um, yeah. yeah, did you see Schiavone's face? Yeah, my God, my God. Apparently it came out tonight apparently that the books didn't want to do it and neither did Osprey want to do the promo that he did. I saw that now. Mm. I I'm not sure. I, I could I could envisage and I, again, you know, I'm not a books fan. I could envisage something where the books didn't want to do that. But I think Osprey went into business for himself. I fully believe Osprey went into business for himself. Because he look, yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. He looks a bit cunty, and well, he looks like a guy who wants to try and be, you know, Billy Big Bollocks without well, being Billy Billy Bollocks. Well, yeah, some fella that wrestles in a bleeding bingo hall in Wolverhampton, pal. Like you're talking about Triple H, who's one of the greatest, you know, in ring performers of the modern era. Like just absolutely, put down your hoodie and your bleeding perm. And shut the fuck up, Osprey, will you? And pay some respect to Triple H's name. Morris is not playing. The only thing about it is, surely at some stage these guys realise that maybe the gravy train of AEW might be around forever. And then there's only one show on, the, on, you know, there's only one show in town. Yeah, but we already know that Osprey doesn't want any part of the WWE gravy train. Look, Osprey was in the red cow a few weeks ago. Says it all. Not bad spot. Smell of piss off the carpets on it. And um, like we already know. Oh, Jesus, look, look at this. He's back, he's back. Jumped in he's there. Right back. Look at this. Out. 
trouncing Maybe. shapes in the corner, giving it the old Rocky. Royal, I told you, Iron Claw is a class movie. Did you see it, buddy? I did see I, it. Do, um, do you get do you get the feeling he was sitting outside the referee's dressing room on Tuesday night, whenever it was? <laughs> Coil. <laughs> Waiting on the mill. You're dead. You're dead. I could imagine Coyle absolutely loafing the wall when Gabriel yeah. uh, picked up that ball. <laughs> I don't even reckon I don't even reckon Coyle realised that at all. Because most Arsenal fans didn't have a breeze until Tuchel called them out at the end of the game. And then they went looking for the footage and all of a sudden it became, whoa, what's just happened here? <laughs> Do you know what I thought of, and I said it on the I said on the, the small show I did this morning on the footage. The biggest winner coming out of this is probably Drew McIntyre. Um well I mean it elevates anything the punk does for the next couple of months, you know. But it, it's also when you look at the footage as well. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's not like our friend was a killer. And I think Drew McIntyre is gonna have a lot of fun with that. No, because like yeah, as, as you say, like you're looking at Perry and you're thinking this is an absolute bag of fizz. And and Punk makes now we don't forget we saw Punk in the octagon. He was seven bells of shite, let's not forget. Was it Mickey Gall? Who who yeah. put paid to him in the first one? Mm. Like and, and he was an absolute bum nobody. Um I would I would say Punk's career was was worse than Jack Swagger, and that's saying something. <laughs> no, it does. No pen on me, but Gabrielle is a god show. I saw it. Absolutely. Showed him. <laughs> Believe me when I say this, we are winning nothing this season, gents. Oh, Jesus. We, we know we, he's not an Arteta fan, though. <laughs> Absolutely. And Mike Jackson, yeah, bet him too. <laughs> That's right. The sixth Jackson, was it? Yeah. <laughs> Any relation to the books? <laughs> oh, I tell you, crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. But listen, we better go. It's time to go, as a great man once said. Um, we agree. need to get we need to get lots of sleep tonight because mm. there won't be as much sleep tomorrow night because we're obviously up early on Saturday morning. And you know the excitement. I'll be like a little child, Noel. I won't be able to sleep, and you know I'll be waking at all hours to look at the watch to make sure I haven't missed the boat. And you know I give it one of them. And you know I'm fucking. I don't know. If we blow it this season, I tell it out, out, out. So I told you he hates him. Hates him. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. What 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 Coyle, do you think if they do? Coil, do you drown kittens around now? Just. <laughs> Just wondering. I don't know how anyone hates Mikel the way you hate him. I really don't. The no, volcano no. Walt. There's quite a cohort. Quite a <coughs> that that don't like him, but uh, we shall see. It'll be interesting now to be some decent matches at the weekend. So we'll see Racers. <laughs> right, listen, we better go. Until next time, folks. An absolute pleasure. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification button. Drop a like in the video. And of course, let us know if you are having a club at the weekend. <laughs> Is anyone else booked into the barbers in the morning? I drown her, Teddy. No, just me. <laughs> just you. Just me. I'm not booked in anyway. Arsenal no. has all you look fresh enough, in fairness to you. God bless you. Week next season. I need a bit of a shape up around the beard. Try and make me gels look a little, a little less chunky. I did mine earlier. Good man. Up. Got the old pork chop going on, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, let's go. Talk to you later. Take Thanks, it easy. Rose.